show me, I'll tell you. You watch. She's probably going to fire herself up. We're probably going to all be on our faces when she's done. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It is such an honor and a privilege to be here. I am so thankful. Um, when my husband got the phone call, and I hate to fly. But as soon as he got the phone call um, or the text message and email about coming here, I knew immediately that it was God's will. And so I, I knew that it didn't matter if I had to get on a plane, I was going to come here and be, hopefully be a blessing. And at the same time, I have been, we've been praying for God to open our hearts so we can receive whatever God has for us too. And, and he has. I, we have ran crazy this weekend since we have been here, but I find myself so hungry for God still. His presence is so overwhelming that you never get tired of being in his presence. You never get tired of praying. You think that you have cried all you can cry, and you get to church, and you're just, your hands are up, and you are just, there you go again. There's just, it, it doesn't stop, and you're just hungry. And I'm so thankful to be in a place where there's other people that are really hungry for whatever God has. And I know, I was telling my husband today, um, I was really tired, and I was, but we were in service this morning, and I was praying for God to have his way, and God prepare the hearts. And I, I have heard this since we were going to come here, and I've heard it several times since we have been here, that God's speaking to me saying, I have ordained this. So I don't know what God is. This is the last night, and I know that he's already done things, and I don't know what he's going to do tonight, but there is things that he has already done. He has already prepared hearts for even after we leave. God is doing Praise the Lord, living hope. Would you stand to your feet with me? Aren't you thankful for the presence of the Lord that is in this house? The Bible says to praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Do you serve a great God tonight? Would you throw your hands towards heaven and lift your voice and give Him glory and honor and praise? I bless you and I praise your name, Jesus. For there is no one else like you to you. You are a great and mighty and powerful God. I bless you and I worship you, Jesus. your touch. I magnify your name, Jesus. Clap your hands and give him a shout of praise. For you. It is our privilege and our honor to be here with Bishop and Sister Staten and this wonderful church family. Their ministry team is long, along with Pastor Jones. What a tremendous job he did preaching I heard about this morning. Amen. I feel very much out of my element. I feel like a plastic fork at a five-star restaurant preaching in this lineup of great men that are here. And so the only comfort I get is you heard great preaching this morning, great teaching this evening, and so you have been fed well if I flop. <laughs> but I believe that God has something for us today. Amen. 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 I was extremely nervous coming to preach here. But after that Focus DC, and if you weren't here, you missed a Friday night. After that Focus DC prayer meeting, I realized I could get up and preach about Noah being in the lion's den, and you guys would have good church. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you were praying. You want your preacher to preach better, your singers to sing better, you just keep praying, and it gets better and better and better. originally scheduled to teach on a Sunday morning, went to Brandywine to be with Pastor Wisenhunt. Amen. What a great time we had there. And then Amen. Brother Bishop Staten asked me to speak tonight. And in prayer time on Friday, God spoke a little something into my heart. So I pray that God would be with us. If you turn to a very obscure passage of scripture, Acts chapter 2. <laughs> This, this trip is a, it is a God thing. It has been on my bucket list for probably seven or eight years. Bucket list means things you want to do before you die. And one of them was to come and be with the Statens 
in their services, not to preach, but just to see what is going on here. My real dream is to come, be with you for a week, and just be your shadow everywhere you go. After being here this weekend, I don't know if I can keep up with you. <laughs> and so I can mark this off my bucket list. I want to add some more things to my bucket list because I'm not ready to die yet. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. Am I preaching through an interpreter or not, Bishop? Okay. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, everyone say suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to look at the first two words of verse number two. Would you read those with me? And suddenly. Bishop was teaching. What a great job teaching tonight that Bishop did. I thought he was going to preach my message there a little bit. I think God has something for us tonight. Amen. Would you place your Bible down? Open up your heart and talk to God and say, God, I'm opening myself up to you right now. I want to receive a word from the Lord. I want to receive everything that you have. But pray that in the morning we rest upon the preacher tonight and upon this congregation. God, we humbly ask for your anointing tonight for we can do nothing without you. I desperately need your power. Help me to communicate what you've spoken into my spirit. Uh, let a word of faith go forth and let us grasp a hold of it. Uh, and we'll receive it and believe it in the name of Jesus. Uh, God, take us to where you want us to be. Uh, let us be encouraged in our faith tonight. Uh, let your blessings be upon living hope in the name of Jesus. Uh, now would you give the Lord some glory and honor and praise. tonight is suddenly. Look at your neighbor and just say suddenly. You may be seated tonight. God transcends time. Time, God is much bigger than we can imagine him to be. He's bigger than time. Time does not contain God. For before there were times and seasons, days and years, there was God. Not only does he transcend time, but neither is my God controlled by time either. But rather, my God controls time. In Joshua 10, is biblical proof, uh, the children of Israel are in battle. And Joshua realizes that the day is coming to a close. And he realizes that if the dark night comes, uh, the enemy would have a great advantage upon the people of God. And so Joshua realizes we need this day to last a little bit longer. And he says, God, I want the sun to stand still. Sun, stand still. And the sun stood still. How is that possible? Because our God controls time. Yes. To further prove that time is meaningless to God. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 8, it states, Be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day, everyone say one day, one day. is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Now obviously this is very figurative language. That one day is like a thousand with God. It means absolutely nothing to him. And I believe it's the best illustrated by the humorous story where a man asked God if a million years on earth were like a second to him. And God said, yes it is. The man then asked God is a million dollars like a penny to you? And God said, yes it is. The man then asked God, God, and he thought he was going to manipulate God, God, would you give me a penny? God was not full. He said, sure, give me just a minute and you'll get it. And he's still waiting today. You see, we are so tied by time frames. But to God, time is absolutely nothing at all. For God does not control him. And although time means nothing to God, it does, and this is not even a word, but we're going to use it tonight. Is that okay? It seems that God likes to work in the suddenlies. It seems like you have prayed about something. And you have sought God and asked God to pour out his spirit in a particular thing. And 
nothing has happened. And decades have gone by. And then suddenly God shows up with the answer. That word suddenly simply means unexpectedly, all at once, on the spur of the moment, without warning. And the God that I serve tends to operate in the suddenly. I'm feeling the unction of the Lord coming to this house right now. There are three, there are several suddenlies in Scripture. I want to point out just three uh, for a foundation for us today. The very first is what we read in Acts chapter number 2. Uh, it was the initial outpouring uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, that he is still pouring out uh, today. It was also the birth uh, of the apostolic church. Uh, Sister Devika, they asked you how long. Uh, is that an old church? Yes, it is. Uh, it's about 2,000 years old, as Pastor Joe said. This didn't start nine years ago. It started on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter number 2. And verse number 2 described how it happened. It was not a long, drawn-out process, but suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. It was not long and drawn out. But suddenly, in a moment, they were unaware. All of a sudden, unexpectedly, it took place. And it took place around the year 33 AD. But what we do not realize from a casual reading of Scripture, that it had been prophesied long before that. In the year 720 B.C., the prophet Isaiah said, It will come to pass that I will pour, I'm sorry, the prophet Joel said, I will pour out my spirit spirit on all flesh. That was 720 years before the birth of Christ. In 725 B.C. Isaiah said with stammering lips and an unknown tongue will I speak to my people. You see this occurrence that happened in Acts 2. It happened suddenly but it had been prophesied for approximately 750 years and many people had, had forgotten the prophecy and did not know it even existed. But it did not matter to God because time means absolutely nothing to God. 750 years in the making. 750 years of being prophesied. And then all of a sudden, God poured out His Spirit because God works in the Son God has always sort of operated this way. You go back to the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis in creation. In the beginning God said, let there be light. And suddenly there was light. God said that the waters come together and dry land appear. And suddenly it happened. God said let there be grass and trees and plants and a whole lot of dirt in Arizona. And suddenly it happened. God said let there be a sun and moon and stars and he just hung the stars out there he did not take billions of years of evolution but suddenly at the word of God it transpired God said that there were little creatures all the little creatures they appear because when God says something watch out it will come to pass scripture is that when Christ returns for his church it will not be a long pilgrimage. There will not be advance warning. You will not get a, 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 a storm or a alert warning on your cell phone. But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, this world Praise in this house. Hallelujah. 
that God works it suddenly. Say amen. amen. But what happens in a suddenly moment? I want to show you two things that can happen in a suddenly moment. I'm not going to be much longer tonight. There's faith in this house and God's going to do some suddenly things among us. I need you to be in faith in God's going to do some suddenly things among us. But what happens in a suddenly moment? The very first thing I want to point out is God can remove some things in a suddenly moment. Paul and Silas are locked up in prison. It is not a good thing. They are locked up for preaching the gospel. And in Acts 16, 25 to 26, we find at midnight, uh, Paul and Silas prayed uh, and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Forget the silent praise, the prisoners heard them. And the Bible says, verse 26, and uh, suddenly there was a great earthquake. Uh, so that the foundations of the prison were opened. Uh, they were shaken uh, and all the doors were opened uh, and everyone's bands uh, were loosed. Uh, they're locked up, uh, but they sang and they praised uh, and they prayed and they praised. Uh, and in a suddenly moment, uh, the doors busted open uh, and the bands were loosed. Uh, in a suddenly moment, uh, God took away the things uh, that were keeping them bound. Uh, can I tell you, my God is the same yesterday, uh, today, God removes some things. Uh, and I've said this often with young people. Uh, God never asks you to give something up uh, that he does not replace it with something far greater. I've seen young people over and over in my life. Uh, the, the group of friends they ran with, uh, they were not interested in living God for God. Uh, they tried to be a positive influence. Uh, but they wanted to continue with their drugs uh, and their alcohol. Uh, and they said, I've got to give my friends up uh, in order to live for God successfully. Uh, because they're not willing to come along with me. Uh, and it was a hard thing. Uh, but when they did it, uh, God gave them a far bigger uh, and greater group of friends. Uh, because whenever you give something up for God, uh, He always replaces it uh, with something uh, far greater uh, and far better. Uh, so not only does God remove some things suddenly, uh, but God will add some things suddenly as well. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, uh, it was 120 uh, that began speaking in tongues uh, and received the Holy Ghost suddenly. Uh, and then at the end of that chapter, uh, God suddenly filled the church uh, with 3,000 uh, souls uh, that very same day. Uh, hey, sir, hey, ma'am, uh, brother and sister, uh, what do you need God to give you today? You may have prayed many times before for it and given up and said, oh, it'll never come to pass. But this just may be your night of suddenly. This may just be your night of suddenly. Why pray for two souls? Because I believe in the suddenly moment. God's going to have suddenly moment for two souls. We have that because we have a suddenly moment. Let's not believe in God for the suddenly 
for years, for years, my pastor, Brother Paul Connor, Elder Bishop Staten knows him. For years, she sat on the North American Missions Board with, with Bishop Staten. And Bishop Staten would get up in every one of those meetings and say, we need a church in Washington, D.C. And they would send guys. And they would come and start a work. And then they'd end up in the suburbs. And thank God for that. The suburbs needed churches as well. And he'd just beat his head against the wall and say, we need a church in the heart of D.C. And it seemed like it went on and on and on. And nothing ever transpired. But then in the suddenly moment, God positioned Brother Jason Staker for the church in Lexington Park. And God brought Bishop Staker yes. to Washington, <laughs> D.C. And in the suddenly moment, God has raised up the church. In the suddenly moment, we are going to prove that God works in the suddenly seat of the praise and praise. Hallelujah. You're on the brink of something getting ready to explode. And the suddenly the moment that happened eight or nine years ago, it is just a drop in the bucket to the suddenly this church is getting ready to start. Step into one church in every neighborhood, one whole group in every neighborhood. How's it gonna happen? I don't know. But suddenly it's gonna pop up over here. It's gonna pop up over there. It's time for the suddenly. Stand with me as I close tonight. I don't I have not brought anything new. I just want to encourage your faith. Listen to me, reason with you for a moment. If creation, the birth of the church, were suddenly moments, and if the rapture will be a suddenly moment, then there is a very good chance your deliverance or your answer is going to happen in a suddenly moment. And I feel so strongly in my spirit. There is fixing to be a suddenly moment in D.C., Bishop. I'm not just saying that. I don't operate like that. It's been a comfort on what I felt in my spirit Friday night. That one at home group in every neighborhood I see back there. It's fixing to happen. It's fixing to happen. That church building situation. I don't know if it's here, there, everywhere. I don't know what it is. But in a sudden moment, God's going to put all those pieces together. You're God's people. You're purchased by His blood. You are in God's promises. You're walking in His purpose. You're God suddenly here to will take place. Would you raise your hands and believe the Lord for it right now? I cut a book on Shabbat. He cut a book on Shabbat. Express your faith right now. Exercise your faith. Let the Holy Ghost flow through you. If you believe it's time for a suddenly, why don't you step on the ride right now? And say, God, I'm going to step towards the promises of God. Would you join us in the altar tonight? It's time for a suddenly. Thank you. 